Hello. Now it's time for our technique portion this week. And we'll again, we'll be working from our string builder book. And we'll be starting with number 54, theme. And then parentheses under it says New World Symphony, which sounds very, very impressive. And it's by A. Dvorak, Antonin Dvorak. He was a composer who actually came to America and wrote this symphony based on a lot of the music, a lot of the folk songs. Folk songs song like Mary Had a Little Lamb that a lot of people knew at the time. And this theme was actually a theme he got from people that he talked to, people that he listened to, and music that he heard when he was in America. So this one, we have, we see a treble clef or an alto clef or a bass clef, treble clef, G clef, violin, alto clef, viola, points to C. That middle line, that's C. Cello, F clef. You have the two dots. In between that is F. The first note of this one is, it has a little thing next to it. It's a sharp. So it's, let's think about our open strings. And know that D is right below the bottom line. So that's one note above, two notes above. So D, our musical alphabet goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G. What happens after that? We go back to the beginning. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, forever and forever. Always in that cycle. So we're at, so we know D and it's too higher than D. So D, E, F, but it has what next to it? A sharp. So it's an F sharp to start. So I'll play the first four measures just for you to hear. One, two, ready, mic. Turn. So we're in 4-4 four, four as well. That means we have four beats in a measure. That's what the top four means. There's four beats. Now we have to figure out what each of those beats is. That's what the bottom one tells us. Bottom one tells us four. What's a four? Hmm. The bottom one, we need to think of like it's a fraction. I know some of us haven't done fractions, but one over four is a quarter. So there's four quarter notes in a measure. So that's why I'm counting to four in each of these measures. We have quarter notes and half notes here. So just this first measure, you can play along here. I'll go a little bit slower. This is just the first measure. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. So just in that, we go from second finger on D to open A. And that last note's a half note, so it gets two beats. Now let's try the next, let's try these two measures together. There's also that line under the second finger. And if you're on cello, it would be third finger. Telling you to hold that down as you play the open A. Because look, I can hold this finger down. This finger's not going to move at all. But my bow changes what string I'm on. So just practice that. Now open A, keep that second finger down. Good, make sure you're relaxed. Make sure this wrist isn't bent up here. Make sure it's less than down here. Make sure you have a good bow hold. Check it out if you have to, pause the video. Okay, ready to go, good bow holds. Try that one more time, just between two and then open A. This is not the music that we're playing right now, but it's just a practice, holding the second finger down while you play the open A. So you need to have tall fingers on the tip of your finger here. My finger's really tall here, really on the tip, not flat like this. If I'm like this, I can't play open A because you need to have an arch or over. So let's try these first two measures. I'll go a little slower. Let's try to all play this together. One, two, starting with the down bow, go now.
hopefully that went well. Since we're going this slow tempo, we want to use what kind of bow? Fast or slow? With heavy weight or less weight? In my opinion, and I think a lot of people would agree with me, we want a faster bow and a lighter weight. We don't want to be too heavy. We really want to be airy. There's times where you can add the weight, but not right now, because we're going at a slow tempo. Let's try these net. So let's try the third and fourth measure. So the first note here is a, ooh, it's a line. It's above D. It's higher than D. That means we need to put down. It's higher than D. So we're going up. So it's just one up. So it's first finger, A, B, C, D, E. We're starting on the note E, first finger. Ready, this is the third measure. Ready and go now. One and two and three and four and one and two and rest and four and. So we have those little railroad tracks that's telling us we're pausing. And then after that, there's two beats of rest. So we're holding that last half note for two beats. Let's try to play all those four measures in a row. I'll go a little bit slower and. Just a reminder, I'm not calling out fingerings. I'm counting time. So fingerings here, it would be second finger. So F sharp, second finger, or third finger on cello. And then A, open A, open A, and then F sharp, second or second finger for violin viola, and then E, then open D, and then E for singer, F sharp two, open A. You're holding down that second finger again. That thing we practiced earlier. Two and then open A and then two and then one. Let's try all these four measures. One, a little faster. Two, ready, go. One and two and three and four and one and two. Good, we're halfway through. Anything? This fifth measure, this next measure that we haven't played yet. Have you seen it before? Yes? No? No? I've definitely seen it before. It's in the first, same as the first measure. How about that next measure after that? The first two measures are the same as the next measure we're about to play. So we don't even have to, we just need to think, what did I do before? And just bring that back. Let's try to finish this one off. Let's try the last four measures. So let's look at these, this last measure, last two measures, okay. Know what's coming up, try to stay a note ahead. I'm still counting time. One, these are the last four measures, starting after our railroad track. So I'll count the two measures of rest and then we're in. Three and go now. One and two. Good. So, one of the spots to practice in this one, definitely not those, that those first two measures, not too hard. And they happen twice. So, double practice those. Happens twice. Then, our third and fourth measure. One, two, A, two, one. Practicing holding that second finger. And in our last two measures, one, two, one, open, open. Notice my one stays down. One, two, one, open, open. If you keep your one down, that'll help extra when you play this. I'll play this through once and you can join in if you would like. This is the whole thing. I'll go a little bit faster. One, two, ready, go. One, two. Retake, ready, 
Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, rest, rest. If you have any questions, we'll be doing some extra meetings this week in our groups. So if you have any questions about this, as you're practicing, just ask, ask away. The next thing we'll be working on is number 60. So it's on the next page. This is on page 14. And look, whoa, we have the third finger on the D string. And they're telling us it's called G. How do we get to that? D, first finger. E, second finger, D, E, F sharp, not F sharp, because this is our high second finger, F sharp, on our tape, F sharp, and then A, B, C, D, E, F, G, third finger. And notice, one to two, they have a little diagram. One to two is a whole step, there's a space in between. Two to three, half step, right next to each other. So we're gonna try number 60, Pizzicato, what does pizzicato mean? It means we're plucking. And a good plucking position means our thumb is under our fingerboard and we're plucking over the fingerboard, more over here than here. One's a more pure sound. This is number 60 and we're just gonna try to sight read this one. Just the first line of this one. I'll count you in at a nice slow tempo. This is using first, second, and third fingers. So make sure we have a good, our elbow is under, this wrist is straight, not bent in, not bent away. Good. One, this is number 60. One, two, three, four. One, two, first finger, two. Two, three, four, second finger. One, two, third finger, three, four. Second finger, one, two, third, first finger, and open. Let's pause there, actually. So let's take this without rhythm. We're just going to do one pizzicato, and I'll tell you when to move on to the next note. Start on the first note, which is D, ready, go. D, next note is E, ready, go. Next note is F sharp, ready, go. Next note is G. Make sure it's set up. Ready, go. Next note is, is, are we going up or down? We're going down. So we're taking fingers away. Just one finger away. Second finger is F sharp. Ready, go. Next is third finger, G. And are we going down or up now? We're going down, down to F sharp. Ready, F sharp. Are we going down or up still? We're still going down, down to E. And that's the first half. Let's add our bow with this. And all these notes are what kind of notes? What kind of rhythm value are each of these notes? Half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, whole notes. Hopefully you shouted out half notes. And half notes get two beats. So I'll count you in. I won't be calling out fingerings. Your fingerings should be written in. If you're not sure, you can write in the occasional fingering. Whatever you need to do to get the right finger. Ready? This is number 60 with the bow. Good bow holds. Shake it out. Pause the video. Shake it out. Get a good bow hold. Now we're ready to go. Number 60. Ready? Go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So in working on this one, we're going to be practicing 
figuring out whether things are ascending, which means we're going up, which means we, what are we doing? Are we putting, are we adding more fingers? Or are we taking fingers away? We're adding fingers, adding fingers. Hope you're thinking that. We're adding fingers when we're ascending. And when we're descending, when the line's going down, we're taking fingers away. And when you get to an open string, then you go to all three. We're not doing that in this one. So ascending. So those first two measures, all ascending, keep adding and then down, then back up. So those two notes are right next to each other, two and three. They're a half step apart. Goes to a whole step. Two halves make a whole. Halves are small. And then you're going down three, two, one. And then the next four measures, same thing, ascending. And then the last two measures, all descending. So working on figuring out whether you're ascending or descending and figuring out how that relates to your scales is important. Let's practice this one more time. And we're gonna go a little bit faster. I'll call out fingerings if you're a little unsure this time. One, two, ready, go. D, first finger E, second finger F sharp, third finger G, second finger F sharp, third finger G, second finger F sharp, first finger E, open D, now ascending, first finger, keep ascending, second finger, Keep sending third finger. Now we're descending. Take it away, second finger. Now first finger. Take them all away, open. Rest, rest. So figuring out whether you're going up or down is definitely the biggest thing. Especially when all of this, all these notes are right next to each other. You're not skipping in between. You're not skipping third finger. You're not going from one to three. You're not skipping two. All of these, you're one note apart. You're only moving one finger at a time. And the last one I wanted to cover today was number 63. That is, it says our theme song, Lightly Row, it's a German folk song. This is a classic that everyone who plays violin, anyone who's ever learned violin, they definitely learned this one. So just learning this first measure, what's our first note? Ooh, open A. And we're going up or down? We're going down. Are we skip? Are we going by a leap? Are we skipping a note? Are we going from open down to three? Are the notes two notes next to each other? No, we're skipping a note. So I'm going from open A to two to two. So let's practice just that measure. One, two. Ready, go. A, F sharp, F sharp. Practice it just a few times, just going from A to F sharp. I would suggest, just like in our Dvorak New World theme that we practiced earlier, I can put my second finger down while I play my open A. Then I don't even have to do anything. I can start with second finger down, like this. Second finger down and my open A. If I have a tall finger, I can play my second finger on my open A at the same time. Just practice that a few times. You might want to pause the video to try that. Let's try this in context. Let's try the first two measures. Ready, go now. One and two. So we have another leap, three down to one. So these are two leaps that need some practice. So a good way to practice these. Take the rhythm out of it. Then you can add the rhythm back. And then the next one. Three down to one. Practice it in rhythm. And then the next part, whoa, are those all ascending? What does that remind you of? 
Ooh, we might have cracked it. If you're thinking a D major scale, not the whole D major scale, just a part of it, you're absolutely right. This is just like our D major scale. So we just add that little three A's at the end, but open one, two, three, A, just like our D major scale. Let's try these first two measures. Let's go a little bit slower. One, two, ready, go. The end here there's that little comma that means we're taking a breath if we were singing we have to go but on violin we can just keep bowing forever but we should still breathe it's important to breathe that's how we keep our musicality and that's how we play with good phrasing phrasing means how the piece naturally fits and where you would pause in a sentence where you put a period because you can't just talk forever and have no periods and just keep on constantly talking about doesn't work you have to pause sometimes give a little space and things make more sense if you do that. So our bow is going to stay at the tip when we get there. And now if we look at these next two measures, same as the first two measures, but we just start off bow. Let's try these together. Ready, go. A, two, two, three, one, one. We've done those before. Whoa, this last part's a little weird. Lots of leaps. We're not going 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 0, 1, 2, 3, open, 4, haha, -ha. we'll do that later. But, open to A, A, 2, so we're skipping first and third finger. We should still put down first finger. You don't have to put down third finger. Let's try just this. We're starting on an up bow, so we start, need to start more of the tip. See how my elbow's extended? This is the second to last measure of this line. Ready, go. Open to A, A, two. Rest, rest. So, notice how I kept my second finger down, just like we practiced in the Dvorak theme earlier, which was on page 13. Let's try to power through these last few measures. This is the second line of 63. Lots of notes here. But that first measure is all repeating of what note? E, which is first finger on D. Hopefully you were saying that. Ready, this is the second line. Ready, go. E, 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 e. ascending. One, two, three. And pause here. Are we going up or down to F sharp? We're going down. So take away that third finger. Ready, go. Two, 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 three, A. We have that little breath. We're keeping our bow on the string, but we're breathing. And this part is almost the same, almost exactly the same as the end of that first line, except for the last, last note that we play. Ready, go. A, F sharp, F sharp, G, E, E, D, F sharp, A, A, open D, last, two, rest. Rest. So as you work through these, and if you come up with any questions, Mr. Gabe and I will be here to answer those questions as best we can. So some quick ways to practice these, always think small. Don't try to play it through. Maybe try to play it. If you have mastered all these little four measure chunks, try to put them all together. That's the biggest goal. As you work on these, these three are three great ones to work on. They have some little things that apply all over, and even some of them connect to each other, just like Lightly Road connected to the theme that we played. So think about how your scales relate to these as well. 
Look for patterns, things going up, things going down. Up, add fingers, down, take fingers away. Think, I said about small chunks, think one measure at a time. Then put two one measures together, then you have two. And then when you do that with two other measures, then you have two groups of two, put those two together, four. And then maybe do that same process, each individual measure. And two fours together, you have eight. You have a whole line. That would be fantastic. If you can put the whole thing together, wonderful. But don't feel like you have to play all the way through. Think small chunks. And the more, the more accurately you can work through these, the better they will be. Have fun practicing and make sure to be diligent. And I'll see you next week. Bye.